Watch as we take you inside the operating room for a full length neuroma surgery step by step removal start to finish. Here you can see we're making an incision down into the interspace between the third and fourth toes to get access to this neuroma that we are removing. So let's talk about this a little bit. What is a neuroma? Well, they're commonly called Morton's neuromas, and it's actually a thickening of a normal nerve that occurs between your third and fourth toes. Uh, more specifically, the third and fourth metatarsal bones, and you have a nerve extending running from your midfoot, extending through your forefoot, and it sends two branches out to the third and fourth toes. And this nerve can get inflamed and it forms a mass on it that we refer to as the neuroma. So what can cause this? Well, they're, they're very common. Most of the time it's due to repetitive stress on your forefoot where you're putting a lot of stress on the ball of your foot and you create inflammation of that nerve. Um, some examples could include people who are working on a ladder and they're going up and down a ladder and they spend a lot of time on the ball of their foot that can inflame the nerve and it causes it to just become enlarged and painful and then those metatarsal bones that are um, surrounding the nerve will rub and push on it creating that inflammation and just compounding it and you can see that's what we're doing here we're spreading apart those metatarsal bones and getting access to the neuroma some other causes are bikers people who are cyclists and they're putting their forefoot into those bike pedals and pushing onto those pedals repetitively creates the inflammation so just basically anything that can create um, repetitive stress to your forefoot, even tight shoes. Uh, many women who wear high-heeled shoes and they squeeze their forefoot into those tight-fitting high-heeled shoes. And then when they stand, the heels forcing the forefoot or the ball of the foot into the ground, and that will aggravate the nerve as well. So what does it feel like? How can you tell if you have a neuroma? Well, there's sharp burning pain in the ball of your foot, and it'll also shoot People will call them lightning bolt-like sensations to their third and fourth toe. Um, some people describe it as a pebble in their shoe. They feel like they're walking on a pebble or that their sock is bunched up. That's a very common complaint. People will come in saying, you know, when they're in their shoes, it feels like their socks bunched up. They take their shoe off, but there's no bunched up sock. And that's because the sensation to the ball of their foot is compromised or it's basically malfunctioning because of the inflammation to that nerve and the patient can't feel properly. You also get some tingling or numbness going to that third and fourth toe. I would say it's more common on the adjacent borders of the third and fourth toe. So kind of like the inside or that web space. So how do we diagnose this? Well, many times it's a clinical diagnosis, meaning you come into the office, we're palpating or feeling around on your forefoot. And as we're pushing on the bottom of your foot, we can feel that popping. It's called a molders click test. And a molder sign is positive when we can feel that popping up and down in between your third and fourth metatarsals. So I'm gonna move over to what we're doing here in this video. We're now on the nerve and you can see we use these spreading devices to spread apart the third and fourth metatarsal. And you can see what I'm grasping onto with our forceps or tweezers is that inflamed nerve. And we're using a small pair of what are called littler scissors to kind of dissect the nerve off of the surrounding tissue as it innervates or supplies sensation to the third and fourth toe. And remember, this is only a sensory nerve. It is not a motor nerve, so we are not compromising function to your toes. You will not lose function, only a little bit of sensation by cutting this nerve out. And that's what we're doing here. So right now, we've cut off the proximal branch of the nerve and dissected it out to the toes and completely removed it. And there it is, you can see I have it on the back of my hand and I'm demonstrating how large it is, what it looks like. You can see we're going to put it off to the side here on our operating room table and measure it. And that's centimeters. You can see there's an inch on one side and it's approximately one inch in size, maybe a quarter inch in thickness when it should only be about an eighth of an inch possibly thick. 
So after that nerve is removed, you can see we're going to inspect that inner space to make sure there are no further nerve branches. You can see I'm identifying a, a tendon there. That's one of the tendons to the toes. And we want to make sure we don't cut that because if you do, you can get a drifting toe because that, that tendon from a muscle belly, it keeps the toe in an adequate position and it helps to anatomically keep it straight when you're when you're walking and if that is compromised or cut you can sometimes get a drifting toe and we're flushing out the incision site here with some saline just to help promote a sterile environment make sure there's no bacteria that could be invading the operative site. It's very common to do. You'll see us flushing operative sites out routinely. So now we're going to close this up and we're not closing our deep tissues. We're only going to close superficial because that is what was causing the problem, those deep tight structures. And we leave the proximal stump of that nerve. We call it a stump where it's cut. We leave that proximal portion of the nerve and we don't want to tighten that up by re-tightening those deep tissues because it could irritate the nerve. So we're just going to close our superficial layer and that's what you can see we're doing here. So we close in layers. So for my medical students, residents watching this, we're closing with 4-O-Vicryl, which is an absorbable stitch. And if you're watching me close, I started away from my incision site and then moved back toward my incision site when I made my knot and that will keep my knot in line with my suture direction and as I start throwing the rest of my suture passes that knot won't bunch up our tissue and it makes for a nicer closure. So we're just going to do what's called a running stitch. We're going to go side to side in our incision site grasping that subcutaneous tissue from side to side. And we're not really worried about encapturing any veins or arteries. We're, we're watching for them. We can see them, but at this layer, there are no large arteries or veins. There's some small ones, but we're not too concerned about them. And normally we can see them and make sure we're missing them. So we're going side to side, going into that subcutaneous tissue. I don't want to get too close to the skin because I have another layer to close. And you can see I made a little loop there and I'm going to tie off to that loop and now I have closed my subcutaneous layer. Not to be confused with a subcuticular stitch which is a stitch real close to the skin edge and that would be our final stitch the subcuticular but we didn't do that so I don't like to use a subcuticular stitch or an absorbable stitch on neuromas because I want my patient back to activity fast and I don't want to have to worry about that incision popping open so we're using a nylon stitch. This is 4-0 nylon, and we're going to do a running horizontal stitch. And it's running, meaning we are not interrupting it or cutting it. So I'm going to do a simple horizontal first, tie it off, and then I'm going to run side to side with my needle, making a horizontal type stitch, but it's running. We're going back and forth. So you can see we're going to start lateral going to grab some of that tissue on the lateral side, go through with my needle, exit on my medial side. I'm going to reverse my needle and go from the medial side to the lateral side. So we're kind of making a square going back and forth. And this is called a running horizontal mattress type stitch. And we typically remove these about 10 to 14 days, sometimes 21 days after surgery, but I usually see my patients back in about five days, tell them they can start getting it wet if it looks good, and I'm really not even using bandages. So this is a surgery that has a relatively quick recovery. We can get people back to activity pretty quickly once we see them postoperatively because we're using that non-absorbable stitch so we can let them walk on it pretty quickly and we don't have to worry about that incision popping open. So let's go back to how we diagnose this. I mentioned we will do a clinical exam where we're squeezing on the forefoot, pushing in that area to see if there's any popping. We can also do a MRI and MRIs look at soft tissue only. Well, they look at bone, but the majority of the MRI indication is for soft tissue. And we can look to see if there is an inflammation of the nerve, but I do not routinely get MRIs for this because the clinical diagnosis is pretty simple to do. Now, there are a small number of patients where it, 
doesn't always present like a classic neuroma and we might be trying to differentiate it from maybe there's a ganglion cyst in the inner space or there's just something not right happening there if we're concerned about even a stress fracture sometimes we'll get an MRI but I don't routinely get them you can also use ultrasound the ultrasound can identify the nerve and when you get really good at using ultrasound and looking at the nerves, once you know what a normal nerve looks like, it's pretty easy to identify an abnormal nerve where you will see some of the inflammatory changes of that nerve as it's getting larger. So how do we treat this? Well, the conservative options are wear wider shoes. You can sometimes do orthotics. Power Step makes a great orthotic where it has a metatarsal pad in it that can offload your forefoot. I'm going to put a link in the description here if you're interested or if you're suffering from a neuroma, if you want to get some power step orthotics, there's a link in this video and there's a code there that'll give you 10% off as well as free shipping. But that orthotic has a metatarsal pad that will kind of keep some pressure off the neuroma and it does it by offloading the metatarsal heads so that they aren't squeezing together now sometimes this won't work it might make it feel worse because it's putting pressure on that area where the nerve is but it doesn't hurt to try this because if it works you'll get relief it'll reduce the stress and that nerve can actually shrink in size we'll also try steroid injections where we inject a short acting steroid around the nerve and we use an ultrasound unit to identify that nerve as we're injecting it and anti-inflammatories can help using ice and basically removing that external stress. Now, when all this fails, you're left with two options. You can either live with it, they're safe, your foot's not going to fall off, you're not going to lose permanent sensation to your toes. It's more of a transient type of loss of sensation that comes and goes. Um, but if you don't want to live with it, then the next step would be to surgically remove it, which is what we demonstrated and showed you here. This was a neuroma surgery. So what's the recovery look like? Well, as I said, this bandage goes on. We'll see the patient back in about three to five days. And after that visit, we'll usually tell them they can start wearing a white cotton sock. If I'm not worried about that incision healing, we can tell them they can start showering and getting it wet. And then at around 14 to 21 days, because the foot takes a little bit longer to heal than other parts of the body, we can take those stitches out and you're back to normal activity, usually three weeks and we don't even see the patient again, they're healed. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have a neuroma, if you're suffering from one, I hope this gives you all the answers in case you need to see a podiatrist or a foot surgeon for this. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below. I'd love to interact or create some dialogue about neuromas and stay tuned for some more of my surgical procedures that I post on my YouTube channel. Watch some of my shorts where we show what we do in the operating room and in the office. And if you have any questions about this, drop it in the comments below.